Good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome from Texas. We are live tonight, um, playing around, showing some fun, some things we're working on um, that aren't quite there, quite finished yet, but we are playing with them. And you can get an idea, a few ideas of things to come. How is everyone? Weather here is hot, hot, hot. We are having big delays on our internet. So um, if you're having a hard time seeing us, just give it a few minutes and it will come up. So, hey Deb, how are ya? And Peggy in beautiful California. I used to live in Southern California. I know how beautiful, I love it out there. Um, hey Diane. So tonight we are going to play with that new shape the one that's in the contest. If you put comments, uh, what you want it to be, maybe post on Instagram, those kinds of things. And I'm not even positive what the name of those are gonna be. So that name might even change altogether as well. Um, but we are, hey Misty, we are um, gonna play with those tonight. I have several videos and at the end, you will see that <laughs> we improvised because my clay wasn't dry, but we made it work so you could see, get an idea of what it would look like. Hey, Patricia, hello from Cleveland, Ohio. So what I'm gonna do, well, it's only 5.32, so we're gonna actually hang out for just a second. Let me get this up on my phone so that I can see um, who, is the Facebook users that may not be uh, from Jamaica. Oh, nice. Oops, that's not the live. Let me find, let me find our live on my phone so that when somebody um, doesn't do the thing that we can find, turn my sound off. There we go. Oh, it's Sally. Hey, Sally. Hi, Sherry and Jennifer and Joyce. So, and Kathy, I missed you. Oh, hey, Melody, Peggy. So, um, oh, Sally from Jamaica, you actually, you did the ECAM. I see your name now. Perfect. So, in the first part of our broadcast, I love to, um, oops, somehow I ended up with a <laughs> screenshot of my sister. Now, how did that happen? Um, I like to welcome everybody and call out names and things like that. Hey, Janet. And uh, But once we get going, hi, Brenda. Once we get going into um, the demonstration, then, then I won't be doing that as much. Um, but we have lots of people joining. Hi, Olga. I'm going to give it just a minute more. And then what we're going to do, um, as most of you know, we have our new um, format <clears throat> where we're live, but I have pre-recorded videos that I've done. Um, as you will tell, I had the same thing on. It was done earlier today, and um, my clay was actually still wet when we put this together, so um, we made it work. Um, but you'll get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and play the first video and I'm going to talk you through the first one and then the rest of them will talk themselves through. So let me play this first one and show you what we're actually going to do tonight. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take these new shapes and um, we, we are going to make a stacked set. Oh, yes, Sally, that gold medal, that was pretty awesome. No, I, I wouldn't get tired of seeing it either. But what we're going to do here is we are going to use these new shapes. Right now I'm calling them Lucky Clover, but the name is the name is subject to change. And it is a set of four. 
I, however, did cut a fit. I cut a template for the t for the biggest one because what I do is I will take. Let me stop this video for a second. What I will do is I will take if I want to um, cut a piece of clay for the smallest, I will cut around the next to the smallest and so on. And you'll see that come up in a little bit. Um, so what I'm doing here is I have my V-Mix and it's a little over a quarter of an inch because I'm actually going to use a rolling pin tonight and I tend to press hard and, and squish the clay. Now, I want to um, explain something here real quick as well. This is my one of my newest pins, the Abyss, that I absolutely love. But when I roll these into the clay, these are 12 inches wide, and they only have a little metal bar on the inside, which can tend to flex. So I always roll with my hands in the middle and press down. Now, here you see, I'm actually rolling on my work table, but as I get across, I'm too short and I can't really reach with that same downward pressure, so I could lose my impression on the far side. So what I like to do um, is roll on a coffee table or coffee table height, which is below me because I'm not climbing up on a stool, I could fall. So I typically will put it on a coffee table below me and then, um, then I can press down and I can press down all the way across. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is this video, um, the sound wasn't on, that's why I'm talking you through it. The rest of them have sound. Um, but if you can see how deep that, that texture is on the far side and not quite so much when it got all the way across. So, if you roll your clay on a table lower than you are and that you can reach all the way over, you will have that deep impression the whole way. So, that's just the first little bit showing you the shapes. Those are, um, hey Cindy, Chandra, and Rachel. Those are my new shapes. Again, I'm not sure if the name's going to stick, but right now we're calling them, um, Lucky Clover. That new pen is, well, it's new, but it's been here for oh, a month or two, and that's called the Abyss, and I absolutely love it. It's so versatile. Um, it's not flowery, but it's still frilly, sort of, or it can be masculine, so I really like it. So now that I've got the texture in the clay, let's talk about um, rolling this or creating the forms on here. So that's the next video. Okay, so I've textured this one little area of clay like you saw earlier, and this is pretty stiff. Um, so I want to do this size. So I'm going to do the one size up. I'm going to cut around this. I'm going to kind of angle it into this texture so that stripe goes like sideways on here. And I'm going to cut around this just like I have every other one. Notice when I do stop and pull out and change locations, I don't do it while I'm in an impression. I do it while I'm up on an edge. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip this over. Bring my banding wheel down here. Okay. Put this down just so that I can fix this. Just want to run around the edges real quick while it's on that form and it helps me keep that same shape too when I do this making sure I get in these depressions really well help avoid cracking okay now take this flip this over so that my um, texture is going to be on the inside like the other ones. The real magic is going to be here at the end. Look at how gorgeous 
Look at how gorgeous that texture is. Can you see that? See the depth of that? That's deep. That's, that's deep. These pins are very deep. All right. Now I'm going to put this size on here. See how they kind of go down a size and it helps you? Put that down there. And then just put something there so that I have extra space. And set this on here. And take my damp sponge. Maybe wring it out really well. And I press with just like that. My fingers are back here where it pops up. And I just kind of let it pop down with that. I'm not pressing hard. I don't want to mess up my texture. I'm just pr pressing it down because it, um, with the texture, I don't need the rib. I don't need the strength of the rib. I just need the sponge for now. And I kind of swoop it underneath that edge because I want this to um, go right up against the wall of the form. Remember, this is going to be that really gorgeous, highly popular minimalist look that is so in. And so I want it right up next to that. And so I'm just kind of going underneath just to get that over exaggerated, so to speak, where it's under. And then um, when I flip that, anything that's over the top of the form, I'll come around with my knife and, and just take that right off. So if, it, if it's too long in areas, that's quite all right. We're going to take care of that as soon as it's done. Now I do. Oh, I don't know why that stopped like that. But hey, um, I'm not sure why that stopped. Anyway, so let me, the reason I really swoop, well, I have to say swoop for it to work. Okay, I'm not sure what part needed the swoop, but I really swoop it under. How's that? So, um, hey, Jen's, Jen's on from her hair salon. <laughs> hey, Jen. Okay, so I really like to take that around and kind of get it under if I have excess. I don't have to worry about that excess um, because I want it close to the sides. Where I worry about the excess is... I tend to take mine out on, right now we still have sunny weather, so I will take mine out and set them on the porch in the sun for, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on the humidity. Don't leave them out there. If you forget them, which I did the other day, totally forgot them, and they cracked into pieces. So you, if you're going to take them out to do a quick set so that you can cut the tops off and get those straight sides, which you don't have to do. You can just leave them set aside and check them in an hour if they're in the house. But um, I put it underneath and then I'll cut it off and you're going to see that in the, this next video here. Um, let me go to this next one. You're going to see me flip it and then cut the top off and how I kind of finish one of these and how fun this shape is. The um, creativity that I have seen in the Instagram post and the post here in our group with things that you could do with this shape, I just love these um, ideas. So let's go watch when I flip it over and fix the edges. Okay. I have one that I have flipped over and I want to show you what I do for the edges of these. I take my sponge and just lightly come around. Now this one's still just a, probably a little wet for me, but I just want to show you. I'm going to come around and then I'm going to take this half rib and I'm going to go around the edges. I am so sorry. My dog is going crazy for some reason in there. Probably hears me in here talking. They're usually outside. See how this rounds and pulls this in? 
and I go around several times. And what I've found out also is if I kind of wet my rib, that just lets it really glide and really pull this in and get the stuff off of it. But um, it really, like I have a hump right there. Got that hump off. Look at this. See how pretty this makes this? Uh, it really cleans those edges. Um, I think Jeff sells these ribs cut in half. I just cut my own. Um, and look at how pretty that makes that. Now, let me come around and clean that up just a bit. See how nice and pretty the edges are using that? Um, I used to go around it with my little tiny red rib bent over and this does actually work a whole lot better with that rib cut in half. There. The other thing that does is really rounds these impressions so that uh, you definitely, definitely helps you avoid cracking that way. But for all practical purposes, this little gorgeousness is uh, ready to go sit and bisque. I mean, go sit and dry to get ready for the bisque. And what I will do is um, I will set this aside. I will um, let it set up just a tad more. And then I will um, put a weight bag in the center of it and just lightly throw a piece of plastic over the top of it. And uh, that's exactly how it will stay. Whoops, what happened here? I don't know how long that was on like that. My battery on my iPad is low. So, um, this is how I will let this stay. And uh, again, I'll put a weight bag, throw light plastic over it, and leave it set. And that's how I will finish all of these. And then we have a surprise. Okay, so it's actually the next video that I show you how I cut the top of it off. That one had already been done. But uh never fear you're gonna see that part anyway but is that shape not just awesome um unfortunately i came out with that or i came up with that um afterwards and i think what i'm gonna do is i'm even though it's new um because i have that sale going until labor day i may go ahead and throw that up on the website just in case anybody wants that while the sale is but um, I think what I may do is um, run that one like next month, part of the, the few days next month, also um, at a discount just because it kind of came late to the dual drape party. And I want to give you guys all a chance in case you want it. So I may let it come um, next month also. All right. So let me play this next one i think this next video is where i'm actually cutting it off and you can see how i do that any questions before i do that i'm not seeing questions i see rachel's yes the um regular ones are great for plates um they have the shorter lip on them or when you make that minimal aside it's got that shorter lip although some people like the taller lip the two deep and the three deeps are great if you watch or go back and watch the replay from, I think it was two weeks ago, I did the Sweetie Pie um, with a two deep and I put, I did, did it with a rim and without a rim. No, I guess I used the single on that too. What did I use the two deep? Oh, I did a two deep dish with the chocolate clay where I put a rim on it and you could see making it a serving bowl how deep you could get with that and then i also did maybe that was just in the other group i did the casserole i think it was the other group i did the casserole 
Um, the forms are three quarters of an inch, so um, it, it'll come up about, and then once it shrinks, that'll give you maybe about a half an inch of a lip. So if you want a taller lip, go to the two deep. And if you want serving bowls, um, salad bowls could also be two deep, or serving bowls could be three deep. Okay, here's a little one that I went and got from outside and to show you about the stiffness that I do. And see how that's kind of pretty close to up against this? And it's pretty stiff. So while it's on here, I'm gonna take my knife and just glide it around the edge and take off anything that's too high. Take that off of there. And I'm on the outside pressing in with my thumb so that it's standing up there so I get what I need to off of there. Take this off. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. Look how it just like comes right out. This, this material is awesome. It doesn't stick. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and wet this just a little bit because um, I want to go and you know like that side I got kind of down but you know what that's okay not gonna hurt it just at all I just had it a little off center and that's just the way it goes sometimes so I'm gonna take this half red and I'm gonna actually if I wet it it slides better I'm gonna come around here and I'm going to bring this around and round my corners. Round my corners and take all of this stuff off. And I'll continue to do that. I'll continue to do that until I get it the rounded look that I want. And man, it makes these edges good. And I think I said it in my other video, I just cut this rib right in half, but I pretty much believe um, Jeff, Jar Pottery, also sells these. So um, if you don't want to cut one, you can get one from Mr. Jeff at Jar Pottery. And I'm going to come around and see how this looks. And I can see that I still have a couple areas that I want to smooth out. So I'll do it just a couple more times, um, but I want to get this damp enough that it will slide on there. But look how pretty the edge becomes. So I'm going to come around here, and I'm not pressing very hard, just enough to pull this clay across here. Now I'm going to come around one more time with my sponge and I do want to make sure my indents are um, nice and smooth. I don't want any crack hazards there. So that's another one on, a, on how to finish that up. Look at, look at the shape. Look at that shape. And don't be pushing in here on these sides now that you're at this point because you will you will cause cracking if you try to push those in. Um, I want to do something else real quick. I have, um, let's see. I want to take this and press a hole right in the middle of this. and pull that out and pop out my little hole and I'll go around that edge just lightly flip that over just lightly and I'm gonna go let that sit I will put a weight bag in the center I will put plastic lightly across those ed those rims and uh, 
we will be back. Okay, so that was just showing you one cut off. Now I'm going to show you another one real quick that uh, I'm not going to show the whole video, but it's one where it really curls over the top. But I also want to tell you, if you don't want it to kind of have the little dip in the sides or when the, or those impressions, you don't have to use like the next size bigger form for those. You could use a circle. You could cut a circle bigger than that form and press it down like I did all of these. Make sure you have it sitting on another form so it's got room to press and go under. And then um, watch what happens on this one. So if you have a lot of underhang underneath, it won't matter at all. Watch this. Okay, I wanted to show you another one of these that I brought in. Look at that's all curled over and everything. And that's perfect. I like it better this way. Look, it's clear up on both sides. So again, I'm going to push with my thumb and drag my knife around and level this off. And when it's up and over the top edge, it's it's actually easier than when it's not. So if you flip yours over and it's all over the place, don't worry about it. Look at that. Look at that. All right, you saw me take that off. Now let's pull this out. Look at how it just, I mean, there's no stick, no nothing on there. Now, what I wanna do, Okay, so I wasn't going to have you watch me go around the edge and all of that for a third time, but several things to notice on that last video, and again, that is the more overhang, it's so easy to go around. So if using the next form up doesn't give you enough on the sides or you can't get it centered and you don't like that it's not fully flush but kind of comes down in those little depressions, then again, use a circle or use a bigger piece of clay or simply put your form down, put your clay, drape your clay over the top using the banding wheel assist or the, the WA, the WA, and then cut your clay out around, leaving yourself enough that you can then put it on another piece of wood and press it under. So there's several ways you can do this um, and get yourself a bunch of extra clay so that you can cut the whole thing off flush. Any other questions before we go to this next piece? Um, Misty says, let's see, let's see. Misty says, oh my, I see a spoon rest. A multiple spoon rest. Oh, that's a great idea, Misty. Um, so let's see. Um, I think Janelle up there asked and said, you don't put feet on your plates and platters? Well, you know what? I was like a foot queen. I put feet on everything, even my little teeny tiny trinket dishes. I put feet on everything. But this new minimalist look, um, a big a part of them have feet, but a big part of them do not. And when I make these and I compress the top and then I let them, I put weight bags in them and throw plastic over the top of them, I have not had any warping and they come out of the kiln so flat that I just absolutely love them that way. So I haven't been putting feet on these, but you certainly can. Anybody else want to jump up on this screen? Any other questions? What do you think of that? Jump on the screen with me. I like it. Okay, so let me, what do we have? Oh, about 15 more minutes. And I know there's such a delay. I don't like to ask if you have a question and then move right on and, and let you think, oh, well, she didn't hear much for my question. Um, so you saw me cut that hole in that last form or that last um, little dish. Um, I will tell you that um, I, I, somebody says, what was the hole in the one piece for? Well, 
let me tell you. I will tell you, um, I was not thinking, and I did cut that hole way too big, but we improvised. And uh, which is one of the things I do best is improvise. Um, and so we'll show you how we took care of that. And let's see, Melissa's gonna go up on the screen. Melissa says, do you stack plates in the bisque fire? You know, I used to, but I don't really anymore. And the reason being is when I do stack them, that does for me, tended, it would tend to cause a little more warping than if I just leave them straight, flat. And then the other thing was, it was kind of a, a thing in my little brain that when I stacked all the plates and I filled my kiln full, well, where I had all the stacking, I can't stack them when I glaze them. So then I just can't take them out of the bisque, get them glazed and put back in because then I have all the leftovers. So I have, I have to stop laughing at me over there, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> And um, so I have stopped stacking because I like to take the bisque out, glaze it, put the put it in and, and glaze it and be done and not have my little leftovers. But you could. You just might risk a little more warping. Let me see, where did she go so I can pull her back off the screen? There you are. Okay. Um, if plates are small, I stack them, stack them, fire them on their sides. Oh, uh, well, that will work too. I just, I tend not to just because I don't want them to work. And then, of course, um, my thing with bisque in, glaze in, and uh, keep my kilns full and not have leftovers. I hate having all those leftovers. I have shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of stuff that needs to be glazed. Of course, I'm still fighting my kiln. Um, so, let's see. So Sally, when you fire them on your sides, which of course for a bisque fire, but then if you can't fit them back, you can't glaze them on their, or fire them on their side for a glaze, so then do you have leftovers that you then have to keep adding or getting more glaze kilns? Okay, so in the bisque, I have never had a plate war, but glaze firing is a totally different process. Yes, it is, totally different process. Um, okay. So let me show you why I cut the hole and I will tell you, I don't know what I was thinking. Um, I got carried away and I cut the hole way too big. But again, um, but again, this was um, a new form that I'm playing around with and what happened here? And um, we'll be, my process will be perfected <laughs> before I put it out there. All right, Mr. Wilson's laughing at me because we um, we improvise. So watch for the improvising. Here we go. Okay, that's the and wrong one. That's the wrong one. Oh. Okay, and this is a quick, fast put together of this. Um, and I will tell you, we cheated and put little templates underneath to hold this up because the clay was still wet when I did this. But this gives you an idea of <laughs> what this would look like when it's done. I'll do an actual real picture when this is finished. Um, but you can do, you know, one, two, or three, or four, um, however you want to do that. Um, but it's going to be gorgeous, gorgeous when this is done. Okay. So again, it was wet. So we, I was trying to hold it very gingerly so it wouldn't wobble and flop. And because I didn't want it to flop, we, we stuck, um, little templates underneath the bottoms of those to try to hold them flat. Um, but you really wouldn't put your wet clay, you wouldn't put it in your tower. You would wait until they were actually glazed fire and they would be stiff and then they would, they would, you would not have to worry about them wobbling and or dropping. But I wanted to give you what the effect would be. And, um, if I had not put the holes in them, I wanted you to see also here on... 
that side. I don't know if that's to your right or left, but where the picture is here, I wanted you to see um, what these look like as a nested set. See how they set inside of each other and they're like flat across. Um, another reason that I haven't been putting a foot on these is because these um, nest so perfectly flat, they're awesome. And you can you just imagine all the different things you can do with these um, nested and flat like this. So um, that and that, oh, and by the way, we, um, I created the, or Mr. Wilson created this, these wooden pieces, but I have wooden pieces that I'm actually putting designs on so that um, you can actually have designs between here. Um, and you can, like I said, decide if you want a two tier, a three tier, or a four tier, um, which that was pretty tall if you saw it to me. So we may, we're, we're experimenting with the sizing. We may make the, the, the little things in between shorter. And let's see, what are we at? Six oh six. So, what what do you think of that shape as nested? Oh my gosh, that's I think kind of becoming one of my favorites. Um, there are so many possibilities. Any questions that I miss, Carolyn? Jump on the screen here with me, Carolyn. I pack it in as much as possible in a bisque. More bang for my buck. Yes, I used to do that too. And now I have shelves and shelves and shelves of bisque. <laughs> that they don't. He's over in the corner laughing at me. Because I have shelves full that I can't fit in the glaze. And so that's why I stopped doing that. Um, love the nested. Bettina loves the nested. Melissa loves the idea of the wooden supports. Okay, so I gotta tell you, um, one of my um, customers, I think a lot of you probably know her, um, Tiffany. She and I were working on this last year. And so if we perfect this and then put the designs on the outside and you could even get an extra one for the very top. And let's say you used my gnome rolling pin with my gnomes or gnome stamps or gnome uh, underglaze transfers, whatever. Uh huh? Yes. Um, you can take and add the, the piece to the top, make yourself a gnome and attach it to the very top. So you've got two plates or three plates or four plates and a gnome oh, or a chicken or a whatever, or a knob, whatever you want to have. You could even do a single plate with a wooden insert and a gnome, whatever you'd like to do to dress it up. Um, so I've been working on this with her for quite some time. And so when we do get those finished and perfected and available, they will be called Tiff's Tower. So if somebody has ideas and works with me, I try to get their name involved or something involved with them. So um, this one will be called Tip Towers. Tips Towers. No, I do not have, um, this one just is, let's see, who was that? That was Melissa. Let me go back and find you. The thing is I have to find you to get you back off. Remove from the broadcast. Um, I do not have underglaze transfers um, on my site at the moment. Um, Bettina loves the nested. I think I said that before. Anything else on these? Um, I loved the way they came out and the way they nest. Um, how many of you think you would put a foot as opposed to just leaving them flat? Um, two reasons I leave them flat. Three reasons. One, I like the way it looks. Two, they stack flat inside of each other. Whereas if you put a foot, it's gonna, you know, they're gonna come up. And then of course, fitting them in the cabinet and putting things on top of them. 
if you um, if you did these nested with the 2D, the equivalent of stacking two forms, um, and you didn't put a foot, those are going to stack flat together the same way. And let's see, somebody said foot it. I want to know who I'm talking to. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's Diane. Hi, Diane. Um, footed, flat, flat. I would leave them flat. So, both ways are great. Um, and if you're not doing a nested set, maybe maybe you want to um, just make an art piece. These would hang on the walls. You could... Um, you could make flowers on the wall. You could make clocks. You could make all kinds of things with these. Only on the bottom plate, even in the tiered. Oh, as far as a foot? Yes. If you're going to do the tiered, um, your bottom plate, you would want to have a foot for sure so that, um, so that you have that depth so that your washer and stuff on the bottom Otherwise, it will weevil and wobble, won't it, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> we did that today. Um, and then Melissa says, feet make glazing so much easier, but I love the flat look. Okay, 100% feet do make it easier. Um, the way I do my flat ones, the way I wax them, and I don't know, I put out a little video, um, I don't know, several weeks back on this. So I have a um, griddle and I heat soy wax oil in it and, and I have it, you know, yay deep in there. And so then what I do is I set my, um, my plate in there and that way it puts an even wax ring and it goes up however deep I have my wax. So, um, how deep would you say that wax is? A quarter inch? Not a quarter inch? Mm. Well, he says an eighth. I... In, the, in, in the cradle, on the cradle, the big cradle, it's about eight inches deep. The other one? In your electric skillet, probably a quarter. Quarter. Okay, in my electric skillet, probably a quarter of an inch. Because then when you set it down, it comes up around the corners to the side. And, um, and then it stops the glaze from running. And then you have just that perfect ring around the bottom. Um, so that's how I do that. Um, can you make a pumpkin shape? Um, oh, a pumpkin shape of these drapes? I probably can. And Miss Rachel's going to jump up on the board. She has a great idea. So for... Without a foot, you can add texture to the bottom and use underglaze, wiped back, or an interactive pigment, and then no glaze is needed and it looks gorgeous. Correct. Now, I will say that when I dip it in the wax, that's because I'm dipping into my glaze and I need it to um, not get on the bottom. That's why I wax my bottoms. But if I'm brushing on, um, this is a great idea. Um, you don't dip like this, do you, Rachel? Or do you um, only do this when you're brushing on glaze? Let me know. Will these ever be sold as a single instead of a set? Um, Patricia, I don't know. It's a production thing. Um, the way they lay out on the machine, the way they lay out on the wood, and if they're, the four pieces are done singly, then we end up with a hundred of one size and nothing of another size. It's, it's, so it's a production thing, but, but we're working on it. And the four piece sets in the smaller sizes, we only do the set in the smaller size, but they're also sized to work um, perfectly with our four piece dinnerware rim template sets. So that's kind of why we've kept them together up, up till now. Um, Rachel, only with one brushing. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, yeah, great idea. Kathy, I would like a pumpkin shape and a stencil. So let's see, I've got Peggy, Kathy, 
Who else? Bettina. I've got three pumpkins. Do I hear four? If I get six, we'll make it. <laughs> if you're talking about, okay, so the four piece sets are, are together and then the larger sizes are sold separately. The 13, 14 and a half and 16s. And those are sold separately because they're they're produced um, differently, and um, a lot of people don't have a kiln big enough to support that 13, 14 and a half, and 16. Those smaller ones go with those smaller sets of templates, and that's why those stay together. But yeah, those larger ones they do go separately, um, but that's a whole different production. Oh, or if you're talking about the doubles and the triples, yes, those are um, individual sizes. And let's see, I got a yay. Could you undergla underglaze white back and then wax? Yes, you could. You could definitely do that as well. Um, but there really, there really wouldn't be a need to. Oh, well, there would be a need to if you were going to dip if you were gonna dip your um, piece in um, glaze after that, yes, you could certainly wax it, then dip the whole piece again and keep that pretty bottom. Um, you could definitely do that. Pumpkin, please. Are we at six pumpkins? Are we at six pumpkins? Yes. Okay. We will put pumpkins. Yes, pumpkin, please, and thank you. Uh, I'm not sure who that is. That says, uh, that's Marie. Okay, we will work on a pumpkin because we're coming, let's see, what are we at? September, October, November. We could get that out in time for you to get it ready for Thanksgiving. So pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. Alice says pumpkin. Um, okay, let's see. Oh, we are at 617. I am going to cut this off. If you have more comments, please just go ahead and put them, put them in the comments and we'll get to the answers. Uh, Misty, you want a deep pumpkin? <laughs> we'll get to the answers. And for those of you on um, my Slab the Fab group, I will see you in the other group. Don't forget, click the link and go to the Zoom. We are not meeting in the, um, we're not, the meeting will not take place in Facebook. So, see you all in the Zoom shortly. Where is my finish? Bye, everybody.